Hi, I'm Leonie from Spines and Splines. Today I'm going to show you how you can prepare and paint an aluminium surface. Even if you're not painting a guitar pedal, this video will be useful if you want to paint on aluminium. Because I'm new at pedal building, I decided to make things a little easier on myself by choosing a pre-drilled enclosure. If your enclosure needs to be drilled, you'll want to do this before you start to paint. The very first step is to sand the aluminium with some fine grit sandpaper, then to clean the surface to get rid of as much dirt and oil as you can. I wiped some citrus paintbrush cleaner over the surface of my pedal, but you could use soapy water or any other suitable cleaner that you have around. I started making music a couple of years ago, in part because I wanted to make new background music for these videos, but mostly because it's just really fun. I got my own electric guitar in August of 2020, and when you've got an electric guitar, the pedal bug bites. And because pedals can be super expensive and I enjoy making things, I thought I'd have a go at making myself some of the simpler pedals using DIY kits. When you've cleaned the outside of the pedal, it's a good idea to use some masking tape or washi tape on the inside of the pedal to cover the drilled out holes. This will help stop your paint and your varnish from dripping inside the case. When you've masked all the areas that you need to, it's time to prime the outside surface of the pedal. I've seen some people draw directly onto their pedals with paint pens, which can work okay, but you'll get better paint adhesion if you prime the surface before you paint. I've also seen some people using specialised metal aerosol primer, which you can use if you want to, but I'm making this with what I already have which is the standard type of gesso that you'd use to prime canvases and wood. I ended up painting about three coats of gesso onto my aluminium, letting each coat dry before applying the next one. If you want to, you can sand the gesso lightly between each coat to get a smoother surface. While I'm finishing up the priming step, it seems like a good time to remind you that I have a Patreon and you can go and support it. If you get some value out of what I make and you can afford to buy me the equivalent of a cup of coffee each month, that would be amazing. My plan is to make weekly art tutorial videos this year and every little bit of support helps me make these videos better. When I was finished priming, I left the gesso to dry fully overnight before I started painting. I won't talk too much through the painting process, but the basics here are that I'm using acrylic paints. 
I normally paint with oils, but those take months to dry, so I'm using acrylics for this because they're durable and they dry quickly. I like to mix my own colours, so you can see here that I have some neutral red, yellow and blue primaries out on my palette, along with titanium white and Payne's grey, which is like a dark blue-grey colour that I'm using in place of black. I use a palette knife to mix everything I need from these colours, and occasionally you'll see me use my brush to mix small amounts of colour. You'll also see me using a coloured pencil here and there to draw a guide for the painting. It's better to use coloured pencils rather than grey lead pencils for this, as the pigments in grey lead pencils can bleed through the paint. If you choose a coloured pencil similar to the colours that you're painting with, it will just blend in really well without bleeding through. As you can see, it's also useful to have a paper towel or rag handy, and cotton tips can be really useful for cleaning excess paint from areas where you don't want it to build up. It's also good to have some masking tape or washi tape on hand to help you paint stripes and shapes with sharp edges. As far as brushes go, you'll mostly see me using flat brushes. The brush that I used to prime with the gesso was a Raphael Corel 20mm synthetic flat brush, which is my favourite brush for priming and varnishing because it's smooth and it's soft, but it's also quite strong. When I'm applying larger areas of paint, you'll see me most often using a smaller flat brush. The two I used for this project were an Isabe size 14 mango brush which again is made from synthetic fibres, but it's designed to mimic a mongoose hair, and it's much stiffer than the Corel brush. I also used a smaller flat Raphael Kevron brush in size 8, which again is made with synthetic fibres that are designed to mimic mongoose hair. This video isn't sponsored by anyone, but I think it's useful to let you know the brand and size of brushes that I'm using, so that you can figure out sizes and styles if you need to buy brushes. The very small brush that you'll see me use for fine lines and lettering is a Raphael Corel round synthetic brush in size zero. I'll stop talking for a bit now while I paint, and if you want to skip to the varnishing section, there'll be a time code listed in the description.
When I was finished painting, I made sure to leave my petal to fully dry before applying the varnish. Acrylic paint can feel dry to the touch within about half an hour, but it can actually take around three days for it to dry all the way through. If you varnish your painting before it's completely dry, you run the risk of trapping moisture inside, which could cause problems in the long run. I put my petal in a warm, dry spot and left it to dry for three days. I would normally use a spray varnish like Crystal Clear to varnish my petal, but because we're in a pandemic lockdown while I'm making this, getting aerosols delivered is really tricky. Instead, I went with a resin varnish that's actually made for pouring and isn't particularly suitable for using with a brush, but I just used a few coats and tried to apply it as carefully as I could. Because this is gonna be a painting that I essentially stand on, I wanted to use a varnish that was as heavy duty as possible. Again, if I was making this in normal times, I'd try and buy a clear spray varnish, but sometimes you just have to make the most of what you've got. Whatever varnish you choose, apply a couple of coats, leaving it to dry in between. When the varnish is dry, you can take off the masking tape from inside the enclosure. If you need to tidy up around the holes, you can use a sharp scalpel to carefully cut away any extra paint and varnish. And that's it, now I just need to make the actual petal. If you're watching this video not long after it's uploaded in February 2021, don't forget that you've still got a few days left to enter my art telephone challenge. I'll link to that video and the entry form in the description of this video. You might think that there's not enough time left, but there's still time. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe and share it. If you've got any questions or suggestions for future videos, please leave me a comment. I've listed all the materials that I've used in the description, and you'll also find links there for my website, my Patreon, my Facebook, my Instagram, and some affiliate links to art stores where you can buy materials. Thanks for watching. Cheers.